Well, good morning. Sabbath greetings. It's been a while since I've done a vlog. What a beautiful morning full of potential. And uh, a word for the world.net. I parked until uh, recently doing the Feast of Booze devotionals. It's the last one last night, although it's still the Feast of Booze, and it's the Sabbath in the Feast of Booze. Holy Convocation with a Holy Convocation. Great power and majesty. And that's what I'm stirred. <laughs> in my trials, in my woes, in my troubles, in my desperation, and also in my utter and abject humility towards my creator, my God. To move. Morning, Melina. And to talk about what we talk about. Our God supernatural provision. I've seen and read many attempts to rationalise God and his miracles and his power from Ridley Scott's uh, interpretation of the parting of the Red Sea by uh, unusual weather conditions to the more painted and pained attempts to, you know, Jesus walked on the water because there was a mat of reeds in the Sea of Galilee which he could walk upon or maybe he made agreements with dolphins. There is nothing too hard for our God. He created the heavens and the earth in his breath. He spoke them into being. You and me, uh, mankind, be formed from the dust of the earth. Understanding that, that God is supernatural is beyond our understanding. It's where we, our faith is. And is our faith so sm small that we, we have to continually say, oh, well, I'll explain that by this had happened. Maybe they took the, the fish and the loaves and just had tiny mouthfuls, but because of the words of Jesus, they were satisfied. Maybe they wrote this into the story of the Bible because uh, it didn't really happen that way, but it made, made God seem more powerful. And as I've pointed out before, what I, what I believe, what I believe... And what I know to be true and within the power of God, within the ability of God, is that the, the, the sun and the moon were created after the earth. Supernatural, contrary to a man's ability to rationally explain. Magic. Well, that's probably the same definition. But he's not a showman. He's not a, you know, a, or, a, or a pretender. He really does this. He really forms these heavenly bodies. He really formed the earth. He really formed you and me. He really is in our lives. So completely, I was wanting to use the word altruistically, but I don't know if that's the right word, I'll look it up later. Oh. He's done it. He's written it down, he's made a way, he's, he's, he's a, a, the unseen and invisible God has made himself known and available to everybody. King of heaven. You know, through the snowdrops and the bluebells, the daffodils, to the blackbird and the house mine. 
God has made himself known. And it's so patent and so obvious in front of us all. Our brains really have to, you know, fuzzy it out. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to believe in God. I could do that. That can't be right. It's so obvious that somebody's made this, that I've made, that this is a, you know, I'm a created being. And that there is a supernatural, unseen power behind it all, a hand that that is so excellent at what it does. It's it would take an act of faith to really and totally believe that that's what it is. I'd have to go beyond me into another understanding, a deeper place, and say that. That's the truth, not random, not random. I mean, it's easier here. Oh, you've got it easy there. It's not random. Well, I came to this a long time before I came here. It says those that seek him earnestly can find him. I was four, maybe five years old, we went to France, our first trip away. The only holiday I ever went away with my mum and my dad, that I can remember. And it's only like vague snapshots. And the vague snapshots include the, the, the uh, taunting and the, the terror uh, put upon me by some French fisherman who brought back a giant spider crap. and held it near me, there was something spiritual that terrified me and that my parents couldn't do anything. That affected, that scarred me for the rest of my life. A, 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 like a fairground thing, a mini fairground on the beach that was closed for the entire holiday. It had a, a zip line into a big rubber ball. But it was always closed. Rain on the beach. Uh, ordering uh, uh, crepes with jam on. Expecting something sweet, my dad. We, 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 me and my sister uh, ordered crepe, crepes of chocolate. So we got what? Chocolate crepes. My dad ordered crepes with jam on, which was crepes with ham. And he sat there and he wasn't very uh, impressed. And I remember one of the. Uh, Another defining memory from that place. Uh, rain on the beach, getting the, a storm coming in, and everybody, all these people in bikinis and trucks coming off the beach quickly because the heavy rain came in. But I remember going out, we had a dinghy, an inflatable uh, boat. I went going out with my mum, my mum liked it. She went out with my mum, but then we got caught in the tide and uh, we were getting pulled out. Pulled it off to, uh, and, and towards some rocks too. And being <coughs> genuinely frightened, my mum was the most coordinated of people, and she eventually lost both the oars too. And we drifted even further, and there was no way of coming back. But then my dad, who was, you know, uh, we venerate our uh, parents as children, as gods, he swam out almost like half a mile, it seemed. Crawl. We was fit man, and he rescued us. Pulled the dinghy back in. On the last day of the holiday, I remember being incredibly upset. Probably the leaving, probably the trauma, probably all the things that are going on. Probably because I'm five, you know. It's there for two weeks, three weeks. And in my upset, I walked out onto the beach. And it was a, a super calm day, super naturally calm day. And the sky was grey from you know horizon to horizon, light like a pale grey. And the sea, the tiny waves, tiny, just a couple of inches high waves. And I walked, and I walked past the uh, uh, fairground place that was always closed. And I walked, and, and I really feel, even now, a real sense and touch of God. Something was with me, something was... 
calm. That calmness was more than just the nature's calmness. It was supernatural calmness. It was God's calmness. And I walked and I walked and I came up to there was like a stone groin right at the end of the beach. I remember it was a natural one. Not a supernatural one, but a, a man-made one or a natural groin of stone. And right in the corner were the oars of the boat. Just in the water. Well, it gave me such joy to pick them up. Take them back. That's how it is with God sometimes. So subtle. So real, you know, the touching of pink and blue in the sky, the rising sun, falling birds, the you know, that move, I feel moved to get up and go, I feel moved to come and seek, I feel stirred in my being. And that's that's meeting with a supernatural God. People want, you know, lightning and thunder and have called for the coming down of flames. But the true joy in knowing God is that He's gentle and peaceful and, and beautiful and special. And we're made in His image. I'm made in that image and even though I'm four years old or five years old he can walk with me and now I'm 50 and I'm, I'm thousands of miles away from home and I'm fighting every kind of battle every kind of, 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 of demon and dark spirit from Jezebel to the devil himself God goes with me and as much as I, as I fail and as much as I fall and as much as I speak to a wilderness I will not faint I will not fall I won't grow weary oh I can be grumpy angry because I know he's real I have faith that that, that, that tells me that, that, that moves me that stirs me that defines me Jesus said because you've seen me you have faith how better it is for those that haven't and that, you know pray people to hear and to come that's why I you know record and share and, and preach and think because my, my call in my job is to point to him to say there's God in the heavenly realms there's God in the heavenly splendor there's God all around us and there's God in you and me and the, the opportunity is to, to, to in a blink of an eye all this will be changed all the corruption and all the fear all the anger and all the pain and all the sickness and all the doubt and all the rubbish, rubbish, and it is rubbish. Just go away. Just go away. We move into a, into a place in a life and a story that, 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 that's so, you know, he'll be there, apparent, with us. Why should I fear? Love is so much more than any other kind of love that I can describe or ascribe. Uh, his name is greater than every other name. He calls me out into the ocean, I'll go. If he calls me up to the mountain top, I'll go. If he, whatever he says or does or calls me to do, I'll do it. The one thing he gave me, the words that he spoke to me, the, 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 the at a point of. Uh, Death. 
I was dying. I was drifting into a central reservation on a motorway, just waking up. 95 miles an hour. The words that he speaks to you are true for your whole life. They're not just that for that moment, as relevant as they are. Don't turn the wheel. Keep straight. Keep on the path. And he knows me. He knows I'll try and gamble and play. Struggle, strive. He knows. Why? Because he's God. Oh, how much more the hope, the love, the glory and the joy that he also knows. I say I surrender. Over to you, Lord. If your ways are higher, your thoughts are deeper. You know where the oars are. You know where the people are. You know where the hearts are and the minds. And I pray and I pray and I pray for you to receive them as I have. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful, beautiful, blessed, peaceful Sabbath. Amen.